the first sip. Mm. Oh my God. There's something about this moment of every day. It's magical. There's something about really, really good coffee. This is bulletproof coffee, by the way. And, uh, mm. wow. <sighs> and the next part of the ritual is, oh, look at Bitcoin. Hit 8,000 again yesterday. 78.18 at the moment. 78.27, 78.22, twenty. yeah. Well, you know what? I think that's fabulous. I think it's interesting. So let's find out what's going on. Let's do the morning cryptos. This is day 110 of my 90-day challenge. We've come a long way since July 31st, people. And uh, let's see what's going on. And step by step, we're going to figure this stuff out. All right? Start the music. See here, let's look at the Bitcoin price news. Uh, I've seen a couple of these that Bitcoin investors will not sell until the price nears 200,000. Uh, Bitcoin adds 41 billion to the market capitalization in six days as it hits all time high of 79.98. That was one hour ago. See how 79.98 is so much more interesting than 8,000? I don't know why. But $100 Bitcoin, 100, wait, $100 Bitcoin, Japanese, Japan Post Bank CIO blasts bubble value. So, okay. Whenever it makes new highs, right, then the news is all about it's going to keep going or it's going to crash, right? Or this is the best thing since sliced bread or this is a fraud, right? So you have that and uh, welcome to the human family, people. I'm not particularly interested in any of those today, uh, but I'm interested in seeing what's going on because this is all I've looked at. I wanted to look, I wanted to peek while I was getting my thing set up. I wanted to peek at the others, but I didn't because I think it's, I think it's worth, I want to share this with you guys because this is what I do and I don't just do it in the morning. I do it pretty much throughout the day and I'm getting a sense when you pay enough time and attention to something, you begin to get to know it a little better. And there are things I've learned about Bitcoin. So it doesn't surprise me when we have these big retracements. There may be some news. It may be news driven, but it almost always happens. And the thing is that has been really indicating that there is something about Bitcoin in the, in the mind of the masses that are starting to come in. They don't understand or know necessarily about all the other cryptos. They, they've heard of Bitcoin. They've, there's like 12 really good documentaries that you can just go to YouTube or Amazon or Netflix and watch, Curiosity Stream, whatever. There's, there's documents, documentaries about it that really do a good job of igniting the idea and and particularly people who are in the financial markets, they there's nothing else that has a run-up like this. And so they're coming in, people. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CME, is coming. And uh, that has been confirmed. And uh, they, they're swearing it's going to be before the end of the year, the end of the quarter. And we're about halfway through the end of... November. We're halfway through November, so it's coming soon. So for the people that are just buying and holding, the transaction times and the expenses of the fees are not as much of an issue, right? Uh, and hopefully the scalability of Bitcoin will not cause it to fall like a house of cards. However, don't underestimate, and this is, again, people, why I call this the hypnosis of money. And I promise I will get to the other charts immediately. But I just wanted to talk about when Bitcoin gets to a new high, the hypnosis piece is that it consolidates at a certain price, and that becomes the normal price. The same thing is happening, like I bought 
two sandwiches for myself and my girlfriend last night before we uh, did our little job at the our local food co-op. And, uh, you know, they were warm roast beef sandwiches, but it, it was 20 bucks, right? We have forgotten that two sandwiches used to cost 10 bucks. Do you know what I mean? That process is happening everywhere. Buddy and, Buddy and I went out for dinner on Tuesday. We both had meatloaf, for God's sakes, and it was $23 each for meatloaf, right? And uh, so we become used to things. We become normalized to things. It's kind of the way the human mind works. There's so many things that your mind has to deal with that there's certain things that it's better to let your unconscious mind handle and we become unconsciously accustomed to new prices, right? And that's why the central bank has been able to get away with it for so long. I read someplace that if you start with, in 1913 when the central bank started, the dollar, what the dollar would buy then was a pair of shoes. You could buy a pair of, and I'm talking good shoes, Maybe not your uh, your total Gucci's, but good shoes, right? And uh, in the process of being devalued, evidently a dollar today will not buy a pair of shoes, right? And uh, according to that one thing that I checked into, a dollar today is worth about four cents compared to what it was worth. Now, Bitcoin does the opposite. Bitcoin becomes more and more valuable. That's why it's a revolution. And, like, I have, like, 500 bucks worth, which is now $700 worth, right? Uh, and I'm not complaining. I think that's great. I just can't, I can't use it. Because my, my particular payouts came to me from my mining contracts in small little chunks. And it would cost me an inordinate amount to bundle those together and send them. So... I've changed my payouts to Dash because I can actually buy Bitcoin with Dash but in larger chunks so that it doesn't have that problem should I choose to. But at the moment, I think what I have is plenty because if it does all fall apart like a house of cards, I don't have all my eggs in that one basket. So I really highly recommend that you don't just look at Bitcoin and you don't just look at Bitcoin Cash, that you look at at least... You know, you, you find 10 really good projects of other coins that are up and coming that are in the beginning of their rise. Because I think this is going, we're going to see so much money come into this space that Bitcoin is not going to be the only one that has significant price increases. So that's my opinion. And it's only the opinion of someone who has been absorbed in this and obsessed with it since February of 2017 is when I really started. And then I got, I got serious about doing videos every single day to kind of document this process on July 31st. So anyway, that's my story. That's, and I'm sticking to it today. Bitcoin is at 7795 at the moment, uh, US dollars, 7,795 US dollars. And when I started Buying Bitcoin to February, it was basically a thousand bucks, nine hundred, somewhere in that range. So that's been a huge run up, but it just seems normal. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't seem like we're in historic times because it's just us every day, but this is historic, people. This is significantly historic. And Bitcoin weathered a pretty solid attack by Bitcoin Cash and bounced back. But it's not the actual Bitcoin that's bounced back. It's the idea of Bitcoin in people's minds. Do you understand? The hypnosis of money. The idea of Bitcoin in people's minds is so much more powerful because of the years, the years, look at this, I mean, What can I do all time? I want to do all time. Let's let's go to one month, one month charts. Whoops. Well, this chart only starts in 2014. That's that's the problem. But look at this, really. You know, but there was a long tail to the other side here. 
there was a long tail here where it just kind of was doing nothing. Why is it my... Oh, Jesus. Okay, fine. Screw it. I'm not going to try to do anything with the dumb drawing tool. Oh, jeez. Oh, come on! <laughs> I can't even switch. Come. Jeez. There's something funky going on with this chart. Okay. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make in the midst of my very pathetic mouse work here is that this is historic, is unprecedented. And this is why people say it's a bubble, right? But the bottom line is just Google uh, exponential curves. And you can see exponential curves that look like this in everything from viruses to population to ideas to adoption of new technologies. There's a certain point where everybody goes, that's a good idea. I want that too. But they hadn't really been aware of it. So it's like the cell phone, you know, it's like all of a sudden, it wasn't just a few rich guys that had cell phones. It was everybody. All of a sudden, people in the third world have cell phones because they don't have landlines, but they have cell phones, right? So this is going to be kind of like that, and that's why people are excited, and that's why big money is moving in because it is a huge cultural, economic, psychological shift and financial shift, obviously. So anyway, enough for my philosophizing. I want to see what's going on with Bitcoin Cash. Okay, so we have a little recovery as well with Bitcoin Cash. That's interesting. Um, and I want to peek at the one hour chart because, all right. So it could still be bearish. But this could have been a turning point as well. And again, the very fact that this is the number two 24 hour volume coin is pretty significant, but it's also a brand name thing as well. And we'll see if Bitcoin exactly the way Bitcoin was with now larger block sizes and small transaction fees makes a difference. And ultimately the people who are hodling holding on for dear life, for those of you who don't know, don't really care about the usability or the expenses. They care that it goes up, that what they put into it goes up, relentlessly and amazingly up. They don't care about the politics. They don't care who is really in charge. They don't care about decentralization. They only care about them, right? That is the human condition. And you have to acknowledge it and be aware of it. And personally, I still find it really frustrating that it takes two days to confirm my transaction, <laughs> right? So uh, Bitcoin Cash, not a bad time to get you some if you think it's going up because it popped again and then it came back to its line of support here. So you might want to get in. I'm looking at it. I'm watching it. If I see a really solid buy signal, I might buy some. At the moment, I don't have any. Okay, so let's go to Dash. Okay. Do, 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 do. Dash has consolidated nicely on the one hour chart around 4.15, which is good. It had a boost and didn't fall back. It had a boost and has found a new level of support. Let's go to the one day chart. Um, yeah, so I am looking at it and I'm paying attention to it and I have some and it kind of looks like our support is in the 416, between 416 and 412 kind of range. And uh, currently it is at 417. So if Dash comes down to this like 395 point but kind of holds, that could be a buy signal for its next level. So pay attention to that. Keep an eye on that. Let's go to EOS. One day chart. EOS had a nice move. 
and is now consolidating a little bit. Let's look at the one hour chart. And EOS again is the beginning of the project. It is called been called the Ethereum killer. So, you know, in in two years, this might be as big as Ethereum, it might be bigger, who knows? And Ethereum seems to be plagued with problems, depending on who you listen to, or it seems to be, you know, just going through scaling challenges if you listen to other people. So EOS, good project to keep an eye on. And look at on the one hour chart, higher bottoms, even though there's there's some up and and down in, not just a straight boost, that's actually better than straight boosts. The steady up and and down and that's sweet. And what is the trend? The trend is your friend going up, right? Although these two bottoms look like they're about the same, so I'll keep an eye on that. And these tops are a little lower, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. What I would like to see <laughs> is more like this. Actually, but look at this. This top is higher than this top, and then it went higher. So EOS just may kind of do that. So, you know, again, we're looking at patterns here. We're looking at, as a musician, this to me is no different than audio waves, right? And if you tune into it, and I sometimes just, sometimes <laughs> I don't like to admit this, but sometimes I'll go to the one-minute chart or a three-minute chart, and I'll just watch to get a sense of the rhythm. I mostly do that with Bitcoin because it has more volume for those smaller time increments. You know, but it's it's something that gives you a sense. You don't want to totally make all your decisions on that unless you're, you know, doing day trading. In which case day trading, you know, you're in and out all the time, but that's too much work for me. So to just play with the different time things and I find one hour tends to be a pretty good one and uh, 12 hours sometimes can be pretty educational you know so you kind of come here come here come here lad you know and that that's looking pretty good on the 12 hour chart so that's EOS let's go back to the one day boom and let's go to Ethereum Ethereum Ethereum. This is nice. It's pretty, pretty nice and up in its channel. Uh, and I would definitely like to see it break out. We'll see if it does. Let's look at the one hour chart, which is pretty good to look at on Ethereum. So on the one hour chart, we do have support here at 321-ish. Again, this is all approximate. I'm not a numbers guy, people. I'm an approximate guy. And we also have higher bottoms. We have a little lower tops. So this could be a wedge, not It could be more of a wedge, depending on what goes on. Again, this could be kind of like this. And the things with these wedges, they can break out to the upside or they can break out to the downside. But this one, it seems like there's a, quite a lot of support in Ethereum. It doesn't seem like it really is on shaky ground. It's not like it's had a huge boost. It has steadily consolidated and it's working its way up. So I still think from a chart point of view, it looks like Ethereum is going to boost people. And if you don't have any, you might want to get yourself some. And again, this is not financial advice, blah, blah, blah. If particularly if it stays pretty strong in this channel and if it comes back anywhere towards 300, get some. If you think it's going to pop out, you might want to, you might want to get some before it pops. But the, if you buy it at the top of this channel, it could still go back down to the bottom. But it seems to be holding fairly steady there. I don't know. My, my feeling, and this is not logical, this is just my feeling, is that with Bitcoin continually making new highs, Ethereum is not far behind. Because Ethereum is like the second one you hear about when you're first coming into the space. And you go, 
What? They do smart contracts? I mean, this is new for people. You've got to remember. You have to remember when this stuff was new for you. And if you are new to the space, a lot of people are like, whoa, Ethereum? What's that? I was just like, Bitcoin? And then Bitcoin was enough for me to get. And then it was like, this thing called Ethereum? Like, what is that? How does that work? Smart contracts? What's that? How is that a currency and something else? What? Right? So Ethereum really has been instrumental in not only creating all these altcoins, because most of them have been started with Ethereum or on Ethereum's platform before they move off to their own network. Like um, Quantum was an Ethereum token until about a month or so ago, and then boom, they converted their tokens into their own currency, uh, which is also does a lot of other things too. So anyway, I, I'm pretty bullish at the moment on Ethereum. And I have some, and I ain't selling it yet. Although I could at a profit right now. Let's go IOTA. Of course, I have no IOTA, and it's boosting like a son of a gun. So keep an eye on IOTA. I would like it to be available at some place other than Bitfinex, like Bittrex would be good, so I could get some easily. <laughs> okay, Litecoin. I got a text from a friend of mine. He was like, oh, Litecoin's going parabolic. No, it's not. This is not parabolic. Maybe it's parabolic for Litecoin. This over here, back before the Chinese ICO announcement, that was parabolic. So, you know, Litecoin has had some pretty big boosts, but it's not parabolic, other than this big one here. But we did a big one there. Why can't we do a big one now, right? And I have a sell order over at Bittrex, about 91. And so we'll see. And I'm, I'm attempting to be patient. There have been times that I'm like, yeah, screw that order. You know, I'll cancel it. But I want to I wanna have... I want to have patience. I want to have a target, and I want to see what happens. But the problem is, I'm, I've am i pretty much decided I'm going to take my profits into Litecoin. So if I have profits in Litecoin, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't put all of it in my sell order, so I put some of it in. And I might take some profits and put it into you know some of the altcoins, some of the, the cheaper coins, so I can get a lot more for my money and get in earlier. We'll see. Um, and just to put everything in perspective, back in March, Litecoin was $4.52. Just keep that in mind, people. $4.52. So that's the other piece that is going to pull a lot of people into the space, is that there's a lot of money to be made in things other than Bitcoin, the opportunities seem kind of endless and overwhelming. So you have to filter some of the stuff out and focus on something that's going to get you some return on your investment of the failing U.S. dollar. <laughs> so anyway, that's Litecoin. And uh, it looks like it will probably, let's look at a one-hour chart on Litecoin. It's looking like it's going to consolidate a little bit here. There seems to be some support around 66, although it came all the way back to this other support, <clears throat> 64. But I'll take it. You know, the most recent resistance becomes the new support. Okay? And that's how the human mind works, people. That's literally a picture of human minds having a discussion conversation and beginning and valuing this kind of abstract object this abstract idea an agreement to to value it trusting stuff taking a peek at neo and i want to look at the one day chart first and uh i've just been looking at watching neo i think as it kind of work, <coughs> works its way up I can adjust my little thing a little here. It's working its way up. <clears throat> and not a bad time to get some. Might be a good time to get yourself some Neo if you want some. 
Um, I don't think the Exodus wallet has it. And right now I'm trying to just stick with the stuff that's in my Exodus wallet. Because <laughs> it's easy and I'm lazy. And I'm not a big fan of the exchanges like Bittrex. I guess there's something about them I just don't like. But you have to use them at some point. Omise Go. One day chart. Omise Go has had a boost. And then now it's consolidating at a bit higher level. This could be the turnaround. This could have been the, the, the end of the bear thing, and this could start the new bull thing with Omise Go. So we'll see. Keep an eye on that. I think I'm, I'm in the money a little bit. Uh, quantum to Bitcoin, quantum to Ethereum. It's looking really good against Ethereum. Quantum to US dollar. All right, so quantum. Nice. And again, it's still early in this project, people, but it's already at $12.77. What's to stop it from going to 15 It's a good project. They're making progress. They continue to improve it. They continue to uh, implement it. And we're going to hear more and more about it. And its trading volume has been pretty significant. It's number six as of the last time I hit refresh. Let's see what it is now. Okay, so it slipped to number eight, but at one point it was number four. <clears throat> so the the twenty four hour hour volume changes quite a bit, but it's a one point two billion dollar, one point two eight billion dollar coin at this point. Let me just scroll up, and Zcash is right up there. I'm gonna start checking into Zcash, and. You know, so the ones on the top 15 or so, keep an eye on those. There's IOTA number 7, Quantum number 8, EOS is number 13, NEO is number 15, Omise Go is number 17. So probably in, in the top 10 or 20 are some good projects that you might want to consider. At least do some research on, start watching interviews with people. You know, you have to have a sense in yourself of what you believe in. No one else can tell you, you know, oh, this is good. Although I got into quantum on a tip from uh, Ryan over at Crypto Grinders. He had a whole team of researchers looking at stuff. And so I take his tip seriously, but I still check it out myself. And ultimately, you and I are both responsible for our own success, and no one else is responsible for that. So there's a one-hour chart with quantum U.S. dollar. I'm liking this because we have, what do we have? We have rising bottoms. Although, keep in mind, you could call, you could kind of call this a double top. You'd call that, you know, solid tops, or you could say the tops are lower, you know, so however you look at it, but this little path here just may be working up to another top where it, where it hits that resistance at 13. Um, I'd like to see quantum around 15. That would be pretty cool. So... Last but not least, Mr. Monero. I actually knew a guy named, what's his name, Bob Monero. <laughs> that would be funny. Hi, I'm Bob Monero. And uh, Monero has had quite a boost. And it looks like it's consolidating, right? So, good news today, people. Good news in the altcoins. And again, they're not they're not going parabolic like Bitcoin is, but they're not Bitcoin either, right? But I think there's there's some good energy in Monero. And that's it, people. I will be adding some other coins and doing some specials on other coins, but at the moment, this is what I'm focusing on. This is what I'm paying attention to. I've been reading up a little bit more on the uh, basic attention token. So you might want to Google that. And there's a whole advertising revolution that's going to happen where you and I 
get a lot more power over what ads are displayed to us, and we also get paid to look at the damn things. Why should we be giving our time, attention, and our uh, our data plans? You know, it costs us money. Those ads, and there's a uh, a new browser called Brave, which I've downloaded on my laptop, which is a uh, a part of the whole basic attention token kind of ecosystem. And on Brave, there are no ads. They block the ads. The basic browser blocks the ads. It's amazing, and it's so much faster. Uh, I will be switching over to Brave on my uh, my desktop probably over the weekend. Um, and uh, the only thing is my password manager doesn't work on it, so I have to kind of you know, figure out how to make that transition less annoying for myself. But so far, I really like Brave, the browser. So go to brave.com. I'll put a link below here um, and check that out. And other than that, I've got a busy day today. My girlfriend and I are going to schlep down to New York City. And uh, I'm going to hang out a little bit with my son and his wife. And uh, she has a friend who's in from out of town. And we're just going to take a day off and, uh, and enjoy each other's company, which I highly recommend that at some point you put all this trading and all the computer stuff into perspective and spend some time with people you really enjoy spending time with because we don't know how long we're going to be on this planet. And making money should be a part of your life purpose and plan. It shouldn't be the only thing in my opinion. That's my opinion. Uh, money has never excited me the way this is, excites me. And it's not the money. It's the progress. It's the movement. It's like... Our brains are so hardwired for this that it just feels really good. It's the same. It's the same process that I feel as you guys have. Uh, I've had more and more new subscribers, and I love you guys. Welcome! And if you like what I do, please give me a thumbs up. Please hit that little bell so you get notifications. And uh, I really, I really appreciate you guys showing up and allowing me to kind of share my journey with you and to. To have you guys' comments really mean a lot, and I appreciate your comments and trying to figure out what's really going on with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, the king of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, the king of cryptos, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. And so let's keep everything in perspective and let's continue to increase our net worth in the process of learning. I love to be paid to learn and I love to be paid to do these videos. And it's not by you. It's by me. I'm paying myself. And by doing these videos consistently every day, I am walking my talk. So that's really helpful for me. And I, I find you guys amazing. I love you guys. And I appreciate you very much. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, check out my Better Man project if you haven't. And uh, check out my music if you haven't. And all the links are below. And uh, I have a lot of stuff for people at honesthypnosis.com. I've been 20 years working with uh, hypnosis and neurolinguistics, and uh, I am a student of the human mind and the human emotions and the human, the human psyche, and I think we are fascinating creatures. You and I are both pretty darn fascinating creatures. Let's, let's do this, people. Have an awesome day. Start the music! Mm -hmm.